when we go to a new country, we want to learn to speak the language so that we can communicate with people. And I think that the analogy is kind of very similar to starting a new business because when you're kind of thinking about learning a new language, you've got to look like an idiot to begin with. And people don't want to look like an idiot. They're like, oh, I don't want to look like an idiot. But it's important. And it's actually the only way that we learn is by going in there and making heaps and heaps of mistakes. And so I think building a business is kind of similar to that. It's drilled into us not to make any mistakes. It's drilled into us that we've got to be perfect. And because of that, people are reticent to try new things and to try things out. You're listening to Neil Asher, my special guest on today's episode of the Subscription Entrepreneur Podcast. If you're not familiar with Neil, he is the founder of Aussie Online Entrepreneurs. They're a membership business that's helped over 5,000 people create profitable Amazon businesses over the past nine years. In our conversation, you'll hear how Neil built an online membership site that now gives him the freedom and flexibility to travel the world, spend more time with his family, and positively impact the lives of thousands of people. We chat candidly about all things related to life, business, and entrepreneurship, exploring a number of engaging topics like the vital importance of community in the digital age, why it's so important to set the proper foundation for your membership from the very start, and some of the specific member mouse features that have helped Neil add over $100,000 to his business. Neil is an amazing entrepreneur, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to share his wisdom with you today. As always, I'm your host, Eric Turnison, and this is the Subscription Entrepreneur Podcast. Hey, Neil, welcome to the show. Hey, Eric. Thanks so much for having me on. Really, really excited to be here. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. To kick things off, let's just get a little bit of background about who you are and what you do. I am Neil Asher, nomadic, traveling entrepreneur, currently residing between Australia and Lisbon in Portugal, long-term lister, first-time caller. Our membership site is for folks here in Australia, which is where I currently am, who are building out their own businesses on Amazon. We give them training and mentoring, create a kind of community for them, and me as well, because I get a heap out of doing it, to help them with their business journey, I guess. It's pretty much the basics of it. We have just under 1,800 members now in our platform, and we've been doing it for, gosh, this will be our fourth year we've been doing it. What's the URL of the site you're using MemberMouse on? The URL is vip.rawlocal.com.au. That's where we have our membership platform. So rawlocal.com.au is where you have MemberMouse installed? That's actually the digital marketing agency that I still own and still run. And I could talk a lot about setting things up properly from the get-go. So originally, the whole kind of help people to sell their things on Amazon deal was really just a kind of like a little side thing that I was doing just because I thought it was kind of cool to help people out with that. And it ended up growing into something like it's a fairly big business now. It was not set up properly from the get-go. So I'm happy to talk about the perils of not setting things up properly from the get-go and how later on as the business actually developed, that actually created some tracking problems for us with regards to how we were able to track and measure different advertising campaigns that we were doing and stuff like that. But the main business website is on aussiepreneur.com.au, aussieonlineentrepreneurs.com.au. It's a very simple business. I mean, it is a super simple business that is. Simple is good. Simple is good. Yeah. This AussieOnlineEntrepreneurs.com.au is the one that has almost 1,800 members on it. That's right. I think we've put through the business just under 5,000 people, and then we've chairing and things like that. But we've got active members, just under 1,800 people. Active is the best kind of member to have. They're the only ones that count, yeah. <laughs> so this site as it exists now, you mentioned that there was a journey of getting it to this point and maybe some things that weren't as useful. What were some of the things that weren't working for you and that Member Mouse helped out with? To give you some context for that, we had got the digital marketing agency in a couple of different countries, but specifically with regards to Australia, we had Amazon that we were kind of um, talking to saying that they were going to launch Amazon in Australia properly, like they have it in the USA. They were set to launch it properly in Australia. And we kind of leaked that to some of our bigger clients. And basically, they said to us, hey, you've got to help us get onto Amazon. We don't know what the hell we're doing. And neither did we really back then either. 
we don't know what the hell we're doing. Uh, you've got to get us onto it. And so we set up, we, we searched around literally. I mean, you would know what it's like with software. Every piece of software is kind of like it's a bit of a compromise. Like there isn't one software that does absolutely everything. So you have to figure out what it is you're actually looking for, which at the beginning of your journey is actually quite hard because you don't really realize what you want until you get further into the journey. So we looked around absolutely everywhere. We checked out heaps of different software, spoke to heaps of different people, and consistently, Member Mouse came up as the best all-round platform to use with what we thought was kind of important, which was a lot of tools built into it to help you grow. So we are, come from a digital marketing background, so heaps of tracking and wanting to know what's actually working and what's not working. We decided upon Member Mouse and then put it onto this subdomain and just kind of put our existing clients into it and said, hey, look, what we'll do is we're going to kind of separate this out from the raw local business, but we'll find out what we can and we'll teach you it. And this is where we'll place all that information, all that content about how you can actually get your product selling on Amazon. So we started with that. And so it was kept onto the raw local side because it was originally the raw local clients that we were actually teaching rather than heaps and heaps of business owners here in Australia and also want to be business owners as well here in Australia. So in retrospect, had we actually taken the piece of software and put it onto its own platform that we could then use for marketing purposes and kept everything onto the same Google Analytics and stuff like that, so it was all on the same platform versus having it on various different platforms, it would have been much, much easier. So had I taken the time to actually speak to somebody at Member Mouse, I am sure that I could have found out all that wonderful information. So it was a mistake not to speak to somebody, but retrospect's a wonderful thing. I look back over the last 10 years since I started Member Mouse, and from my current perspective, I can look at a lot of things as mistakes. But it's not really helpful because the fact of the matter is, I am where I am, and I'm happy where things are. So who am I to say that if something had been different, it would have been better? We don't have the full perspective to see. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. We set the software up onto the existing raw local platform, and then it kind of organically just started to grow from there with our business clients telling us about other businesses. And we went to a trade fair as well in Australia, and we were talking to heaps of different people at this trade fair about Amazon and what Amazon was doing. And so it kind of just grew organically out of that. And of course, the wonderful thing about Member Mouse is it really does facilitate growth, particularly once I had got the more advanced platform it really facilitated growth because we then got access to all the reporting tools and things like that. That for me was a big lesson. Something I think is really important for people to realize is that there's a night and day difference, in my opinion, between the kind of standard platform and the professional platform that gives you the advanced reporting options as well as some other things as well. Yeah, a lot of the support automation, like automated overdue payment handling, billing activity logs, etc., A lot of these features were added in because we saw that people were doing high volume and not having an automated solution for common things like rebuild payment declines was creating problems, resulting in lost revenue and profits. We use MemberMouse on MemberMouse.com, so we're also customers. So we always have the benefit of direct experience, which guides us to know what can be improved. So it's really cool that way because we take the feedback from customers and how it can be improved. We also take it from our own direct experience and we make the improvements and then everybody can benefit. So with regards to the increased ability for charging credit cards and the ability to kind of alter when the credit card billing schedules happen that you get in the professional, for me, I mean, the difference just that made to our ability to reduce the churn in the business as it's added hundreds of thousands of dollars to the business, just that one feature alone. People don't know when they're starting a business what they're going to need when they actually have success. When you start from ground zero, you don't have the benefit of experience to tell you the kinds of challenges you'll face when things start to pick up in a positive way. When you start making more money, that's great. But with this comes increased support costs, an increase in maintenance items, an increase in the number of actions that customers want to take, like updating their credit card details, managing subscriptions, increased traffic on the site, and the list goes on. The benefit of using platforms like MemberMouse is the benefit of experience is built into the software so that by the time you get to the point where you need automation, customer self-service tools, increased performance and reliability, it's already there and working. Exactly. For us, it's been a revolution 
in the business that it has. And now the, the revenue that we make from the membership side of our business it actually exceeds the revenue that we make from the digital marketing side of the business. So our little kind of side thing that we started has kind of turned into a much bigger thing <laughs> and uh, overtaken the other business that it was built upon. I see this trend a lot. Member Mouse was a sponsor at a conference last year, a customer of ours in the UK, and I went out there. A lot of people in the audience were people who were trading their time for money. They were consultants, helping people to build information products, helping them to build membership sites, etc. But the one-off project business can eat away at you over time. In order to maintain the same level of revenue each month, you have to constantly find new clients. And working with clients can be touch and go. It's never a clean-cut thing. That's right. So many people want to make that switch to having a subscription business or product business. They've developed a certain amount of expertise. And the fact of the matter is, you can help more people if you can figure out a way to do that. It's a skill to take your ability to work one-on-one with somebody and transform that conceptually into a product that will work for a larger group of people. But if you can do that, then it's great because you have a more sustainable and a reliable revenue stream from that business. And now every time you put work into it, it helps everybody and not just one person. That's right. You get to really disseminate information to a much larger audience because of the way that membership sites are structured. For us, it's been... Absolutely incredible. Who was the conference that you spoke at in the UK? It was called Atomicon. The customers are Andrew and Pete. That's basically the name they go by. Their YouTube channel is called Andrew and Pete, and they come as a package deal, essentially. That's their shtick. Can you tell me a little bit more about Amazon businesses? Because I obviously shop on Amazon, but I don't know what kinds of avenues people are taking to actually build businesses on Amazon. Most people, I mean, in the age of coronavirus, this, you know, maybe a little bit not old hat, but certainly out of date, but most people would traditionally source their products from a country like China, for instance, and then import them into the USA or wherever it may be, and then put their own particular markup onto it and start selling them on Amazon. And that's a very, very tried and tested business strategy that's been going since the days of the East India Trading Company and things like that, where exports and imports, etc. What we encourage our members to do is to find local producers, whether that's within their region or things like that. Certainly here in Australia, find local Australian manufacturers and to work with them to bring their products to market. Because most manufacturers and manufacturing companies, they are not marketers. They are not interested in selling their products B2C. They're only interested in selling their products B2B. So there's a big opportunity there to help Australian manufacturers or USA manufacturers to get their products out there, to get their products known and to work with them, to bring their business and their products and their ideas to market. And so that's where we tend to focus, not so much on the import products from China market, but from the let's help businesses within our own country to actually scale out and also businesses in other countries as well. So a lot of people who are in Australia are migrants. And so we say to them, hey, look, if you are Italian, for instance, then go find a brilliant supplier in Italy and let's bring them into Amazon and into Australia and bring them into the world as well. So that's kind of where we focus rather than on this traditional business model that a lot of folks focus on, which is the import from China into the USA, for instance. Let's not focus on that. Let's focus on something else instead. So since you weren't doing that and that wasn't your focus from the beginning, then this situation with the virus going on right now hasn't affected you as much as it could have? Probably not as much as it could have. I mean, right now, the whole virus thing is very, very interesting. China, for a big part, did shut its doors for a couple of weeks. What essentially happened is after Chinese New Year, a lot of the factories, traditionally, what would happen is everybody would go back to work pretty much at the same time after Chinese New Year, which is a month, basically, holiday where factories in China are essentially closed. They're on a very much a skeleton sports staff. But Chinese government stopped all of that. So they had a phased people going back to work rather than just this big overall group of folks going back to work. And so that did put a little bit of a damper on Chinese exports out of the country because there wasn't the people there to support that. But now that's to a big degree now, that's kind of over. I mean, the number of cases of the virus in China is dropping. Factories are going back to work. It seems to be the case that China's kind of getting back into the swing of things. There's that. However, because a lot of folks within our community, they actually don't from China. 
they're sourcing either domestically or from other countries where they're from, they're natives of, and they've kind of migrated to China. It didn't really have the same effect on them. So it was an interesting exercise for a lot of people to understand how these things happen, like geoeconomics happen at that scale, and to see the benefits of actually having a plan B in place for them as well. So that was interesting to be a part of and to be a part of that solution for people as well. There's a lot of things coming to a head in the world at this time, climate issues, resource constraints, social unrest. So I think that bringing things closer to the local community is beneficial in all areas. It's great that we have the option as humans to send something across the world, but it shouldn't be the default. We need to be doing more things close to home, building relationships with people close to home, supporting people who are doing things close to home. It's more sustainable that way. I 100% agree with that. As a long-term economic model, it's far more sustainable for people than it is. So I'm 100% behind that too. It allows us to maintain our human relationships, which are also extremely important to maintain the mental health of everybody. When everything's so disconnected and you essentially just live out of a dark room with a computer screen, then you end up with all of these escalating statistics of different mental and physical health issues that people are wrestling with. That's exactly right. I mean, one of the things that we've done within our membership site is really focused on that aspect of that, that community aspect of that, developing new friendships, developing new relationships with people. In two weeks time, for instance, we've got a big conference that we put on every year, Aussie Online Entrepreneurs Conference, where we've got 200 of the folks who are members of our platform all getting together for a two-day party. So I think that's an incredibly important component of it. And it's a thing that most folks don't really understand when they start into these online businesses that you don't have in the work environment, in the traditional work environment, they have inbuilt into them community, friendships and things like that built into them. But as soon as you take yourself out of that, then you have to engineer those things into your life to maintain those fundamental things that actually make us happy and give us food for the soul. It can be a challenge depending on a person's personality type to do that. That's right, absolutely. For me, I went through a period where I had to come to a point where I specifically made it a priority because it wasn't natural to me. I think that's good. Yeah, it is good. Knowing yourself sufficiently to understand that that's something that you need to actually make a priority. One of the biggest things I think is that, you know, knowing yourself and what actually makes you tick and what you need to focus on. Because I'm the same, you know, I could very, very easily just get absorbed so much in what I'm doing to the detriment of everything else around me. And so I have to engineer that into my life as well. With these Amazon businesses, what does the trajectory of a prospect look like? Are you dealing with absolute beginners? Like someone just wakes up one day and they're like, I want to make some money on Amazon. And then they search around and they find you. Are you dealing with someone from the absolute beginning and holding their hand through the entire setup? One of the things that Member Mouse facilitates is the ability to target people dependent on the phase of their sophistication about that particular endeavor. So in this instance, Amazon, I'm selling things on Amazon, for instance. So Member Mouse allows us to set up different levels depending on the customer's sophistication. So that means that we can target people who are the very, very beginning of their journey. And so the marketing that we undertake is 100% all about the beginning of their journey, what's going on for them as people as they embark upon this journey, as they think about if that's something they can do, if they wrestle with their own confidence about stepping out of their comfort zone and starting a business, we can communicate directly with them and then bring them into Member Mouse at a point where we're then, it's everything's for the beginner, everything's based around what's going on for that specific person at that specific moment. And then as they become more advanced, we can kind of ascend them through the process. And we can also target people through our marketing who are more advanced, who are business owners and are looking for a way to sell their products and services on Amazon as another distribution channel for what they're doing. So we can target those people as well. And of course, Member Mouse gives us the functionality to go after that particular level of sophistication as well, as well as the advanced people who are already selling on Amazon, already making seven figures on Amazon, whatever it may be, and to give them the tools they need to get to eight figures and more. So Member Mass has enabled us to tailor-made our marketing to suit each individual person, which has really broadened our marketplace that we can go after. I mean, we focus 100% on Australia and the Australian market. 
Right now, we have no plans to diversify and scale out into other marketplaces. I'd much rather be like a big fish in a small pond, as far as that's concerned, than just target and with 100% accuracy, the narrative that people are having inside their heads in Australia. We understand the Australian market really well. That's been a really important thing for us to come to realize and to put my megalomania in check. It's interesting. I just recorded a podcast with Andre Chaperone, whose business is called Tiny Little Businesses. Do you know him? I know Andre, yeah. It's all about that. It's more important to have a small group of people who are your super fans than to have just a massive amount of people who you're just trying to collect in order to get some amount of money. I also subscribe to that. I mean, I think keeping it small allows you to have those touch points that you're talking about, segmenting the group, honing your marketing such that it's speaking to them directly. And speaking about these beginner people, I find in our business, and I wonder if it's the same for you, that for beginners, a lot of it's about qualification. It's about saying, here's a small preview of what this is going to be like. Are you sure you want to do this? Number one, are you really ready to commit and be consistent? It's basically like raising all the objections to see if they're actually ready to embark on this journey. Because it's not just like they say, yes, I want it, and then immediately money starts flowing in. Our strategy, I think, is same, same, but a little bit different. So we come from, I think, a slightly different space, whereby what we're saying to folks is, hey, okay, you're interested in starting a business on Amazon. So here's step one of thinking through that process. Because what I find with business owners or want to be business owners is there's a lot of fear about making that leap, that transition. And there's a lot of uncertainty about what their life will look like if they do start a business. And for most people, they have a kind of better of a devil you know attitude to this sort of thing. So what we found is a really good thing to do is to very, very gently kind of demonstrate to them that their existing skills that they have, their existing intellectual resources they have can be simply applied to something new. And that's been a real shift for us as a way of actually thinking about our audience and the way that they start these businesses. Because most of these decisions not to move ahead are kind of, oh, I'm not comfortable. I'm unsure. I don't know. I don't know how to do this without making myself look like an idiot. That kind of thing. And then a great analogy is we do heaps and heaps of traveling. I mean, the member mouse business that we have has really meant that not only do we get to do a lot of traveling, but I could also say, hey, I'm traveling because I'm out there looking at different products and looking at different countries and seeing what's going to go really, really well on Amazon. So, And that's something we really love to do. So one of the things we do is we go and live in new countries and we do that heaps. And we'll have you know one or two years in a new country, as well as having our base here in Australia. So we are currently living in Portugal. And Portugal is where I live most of the time. And I know Andre, for instance, is in Spain. So there's a long history of us doing that. But when we go to a new country, we want to learn to speak the language so that we can communicate with people. And I think that the analogy is kind of very similar to starting a new business because when you're kind of thinking about learning a new language, you've got to look like an idiot to begin with. You know what I mean? You've got to make mistakes. You have to be willing to look like an idiot. (laughs) And people don't want to look like an idiot. They're like, oh, I don't want to look like an idiot. Nobody wants to be the idiot. You know what I mean? But it's important. And it's actually the only way that we learn is by going in there and making heaps and heaps of mistakes and and not being able to say the words properly and getting laughed at in a nice way, though, when you make those mistakes. And so I think building a business is kind of similar to that. It's drilled into us not to make any mistakes. It's drilled into us that we've got to be perfect. And because of that, people are reticent to try new things and to try things out. And so that's the space we come from. We come from the space of, okay, well, Yes, this is going to be a little bit scary. It is going to be kind of weird. You are going to make a few mistakes. But hey, look at all these other people who are all making mistakes too. Right. And look at me. (laughs) That's right. And look at me. Um, Anybody who's kind of on my Facebook page, I make a point of making a big thing about all the mistakes I make because I want people to realize that that's just normal. That's just a normal thing that we do. We have to go through that phase. We don't ever get to be masters of it. You're always learning. And because we're always learning, you're always making mistakes. It's part of the game, and I really appreciate that perspective and approach. It can be tough sometimes. I don't know if you know anything about astrology, but I'm a double Scorpio. Are you? Yeah. Wow. (laughs) My personality is like, if there's a pool, I'll throw myself into the deep end and see if I sink or swim. That's personally what feels natural to me, and I can forget that that's not the most comfortable thing for everybody. 
for most people, really. So being reminded that, having an encouraged perspective, taking the benefit from the place of experience is not to be so much like warning against, hey, you need to make sure that you have all these things in a row. It's more like, look, we've all started at square one at some point. Yes, these things are going to happen and they're not going to feel comfortable, but that's the way through. That's how you get there. I'll be here with you. We'll help you do it and guide you so that you're not wasting your energy. And then ultimately, if you stick with it, if you stick with us, we'll get there together. I like that. And one of the things that Member Mouse, I personally feel, does very, very well, which kind of speaks to that, is that support side of things. I find Member Mouse's support to be absolutely first rate. In my experience, they've been hands down the best support for software anyway that I've had. And I think that speaks a lot to the attitudes that you guys have. They do a really great job. They really do. Yeah, we put a high priority on support early on. Mm, Good. I started as a developer and I'm a software engineer. So I started building the software. That was my first role in the company. Built the first version of Member Mouse. And then immediately after that, it was clear that somebody had to play support. So in the first three years, personally, I was answering thousands of support tickets. That's incredible. Great experience. Also super hard psychologically very tough because you're hearing often with support a lot of the negativity about what's going wrong, not about what's going right. People don't necessarily voluntarily always come and tell you how great things are through the support channel. Yeah, that's right. It was a very good lesson for me, though, to be in that position. But ultimately, it got to the point where if the business was going to proceed, I couldn't be stuck doing support tickets. Absolutely. Then we had to hire people. But I think that I have a natural aspect of my own personality where I genuinely want people to be successful. And support is a big portion of that. And so naturally, I work to attract people and instill into the team that that's important. Now, I'm not saying that the support team is great because of me. That's not why I'm saying this. It's just to highlight that there was a progression here. But now it's great because it was also letting the support team come into its own and allowed me to accept weaknesses that had developed in me. For example, the fact that I don't do support means that the support team knows a lot more than me about the nuances of what can go wrong. Relinquishing that control to another group of people was a big thing for me to have to go through about five years in. But again, it's one of those things that come up that you need to let go and let others shine for the whole thing to move forward. I think that that sort of thing, that lessons to be learned upon the journey that we all go through as business owners, regardless of what sort of business we're building. They're fundamental lessons that you have to go through as you're on your business building, your entrepreneurial journey. That's why for me, listening to things like your podcast that you do and going to events and sitting with other business owners and just hearing that, you know, oh, I'm on that same journey too. I'm at this phase in the journey, but I'm on that same journey too. I find that incredibly fulfilling to do that, to be immersed within that that entrepreneurial world and to just understand, you know, Eric's had to go through that too. Eric's had to go through the place where he was doing all the support. He really understood what was going on. You have to humble yourself to hear all the shit what's going on. Excuse my language. You have to hear all that stuff. But then you kind of go, okay, well, now I understand. Now I understand. And now I can think about how I'm going to put a team in place who will not only be able to do that, but supersede my ability to do that too. And I think that's great that you've got the self-awareness to go through that. But I think, moreover, it's important that other people get to hear that too, because that's a natural part of the entrepreneurial journey. That's a natural thing that we all go through as entrepreneurs. doesn't matter what business you're building, everybody goes through that process. Agreed. At this point, is there anything else that you can think of that would be something valuable to share with the audience and maybe something that's really front of mind for you these days? I think that depending on where you are in your membership platform journey, I think that the single most important thing that you can do, and this is probably my marketer's brain speaking, I've got pretty adept marketer's brain, but the single most important thing you can do is remember that the people who are your members are people. They are somebody sitting at their computer trying to figure this shit out for themselves, trying to get to the point where you've gotten to in your own particular journey and trying to figure out how to do that and how to build their own lives, improve their lives, set themselves free, whatever that means for them. It's somebody sat at their computer. And I've found that the greatest breakthroughs I've had in my own business is when I've really sat down and thought about who that person is. What are they worried about? What are they excited about? 
What is it that keeps them up at night? What are they trying to achieve? Why are they trying to achieve it? I found that asking myself those questions and thinking a lot about that person has enabled me to put things into the business that oftentimes the people who are in my business didn't even realize they needed. But when we've introduced them, they've been, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm so glad you've done this. And it's been a really big thing for them without recognizing that's what it was that they wanted. And so I found that to be a really useful exercise. And I also think as well, in this age where we aren't as connected, that that's a really cool thing to do as well. It kind of, and this is a really naff thing to say, as we were saying in England, I find it really makes your heart warm to think about that as well, to think about the, your customers and what they're looking for. You kind of really connect with people. And I think that's really important. I found personally, that's a really cool thing to do. And also to remember that whether you have one customer, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, the fact that they are there and said yes to whatever you are offering at whatever stage of the journey that you are on is the reason that you are able to do what you're doing. Nice. Absolutely. That's very nicely put. You can't do without the customers. That's right. Hey, Eric, I've got a question for you, if you don't mind. Are you thinking of or planning to do a member mouse seminar, conference, get together where you invite people like myself who are users of the software to come along and sit in a room, talk to each other, listen to people like yourself and other folks who are using Member Mash and just to learn how we can better build our membership businesses. As of 30 seconds ago, yes. <laughs> so whenever you want to come to Santa Fe, you let me know when you've got your ticket and I'll invite some more people. Is that for real? I mean, I would love to I would love to come to a seminar and come and sit in. It's totally for real. And that's the only place I know to start because the thing is this, and this is something I'm working on with all aspects of my life right now. I tend to overcomplicate things. And when I do that, what ends up happening is some things never see the light of day because I'm trying to make it too perfect. I'm trying to make it too good. It took me two years to get an MVP out of Member Mouse. You know, I have to go through my lessons, right? Because I was trying to get everything done, my whole vision all at once. But I know now, the quicker you can get anything out in front of somebody, the better. No matter how dank you think it is, as long as it does something, the feedback is what's going to guide it. The feedback loops from the people, the users, are going to help guide it because you can't know everything on your own. So yeah, I'm 100% serious. If it starts with us, we say yes. Then we say, hey, Neil and I are getting together. Do you want to come? There was actually a couple of customers up in Canada who have asked me this question too. And if it's just five of us, great. It doesn't need to be a huge ordeal. If we start somewhere, then it can go somewhere. So I love that idea. All right. Well, without putting too fine a point on it, you can absolutely expect me in Santa Fe. As soon as I get, I mean, I'm in Australia now to come and do this conference that we're doing here in Australia before I fly back to Brisbane at the end of this month. My next thing will be booking a ticket to come over to Santa Fe and come and say hi. Sounds good to me. I would love to meet you. Pretty lonely, so it'd be awesome to go and get together and just say hi to everybody. Yeah, and one of the ways I actually get around that is I do tea ceremonies. I have an Airbnb experience where people who travel to Santa Fe can book a tea ceremony with me, and we hang out for an hour and a half and drink Chinese teas prepared in the traditional gung fu style, and it's really great. That's fantastic. We were just in Japan. I say just, I think it was probably about four or five months ago we were in Japan, something like that. And we did the whole kind of tea ceremony there as well. And it was the most ornate and classically beautiful thing that, that I've done. It was absolutely brilliant. Mine's a little bit more wabi-sabi than Japanese tea ceremonies. They're very precise. Yeah, Japanese is a very precise ceremony. Mine's, uh, it's different, different style. But Gung Fu, though, it's basically a martial art. It's a practice and everybody brings their own personality to it. I mean, there are fundamentals to it. It's like learning to play the piano. Everybody learns the basics. You press the keys. But then ultimately, each person expresses themselves individually through the instrument. Nice. That's a wonderful way of putting it. I like that. My wife is an artist. She makes pottery and ceramics and things like that. And so I'm very familiar with the wabi-sabi kind of concept of how things are put together. I think our house is built upon those founding principles. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I'd love to be a part of that too. That sounds nice. I've had a strong meditation practice for the past five years. I've been to India three times for two months at a time, sat in silence for 40 days. Doing Vipassana? No, just doing different practices, not strictly Vipassana, but in silence. So deepening my relationship with myself and all this subtle, the work with tea and the work with meditation, and it all bleeds back into the work because how you do one thing, it's how you do everything. And it's just the big theme for my life at this time right now. 
It's just surrender. Notice the indicators that move me to action other than my ego. And then just follow it spontaneously when it happens. Don't try to control too much. Don't try to plan too much. All this stuff. Man, I love that. I do a yoga practice every day. And what I've taken from my own yoga practice is a deeper awareness of the things outside myself, feeling and understanding how I'm responding to them. So I can 100% see where you're going. And I've been and done meditation retreats where I've been and sat in silence for 12 days. I haven't done a 40-day one. I didn't want to start talking again after that. One of the things you realize is how much trouble you get yourself into when you talk. <laughs> exactly. I did one retreat here in Australia, this was. And it was in a place called the Blue Mountains. I went, it was a 10-day retreat. And then I came back into my regular life here in Sydney. And as I was, as I was driving on the drive back from sitting in silence for 10 days coming into Sydney. I felt kind of stress re-enter my body. It was the weirdest, because you become very subtly aware of little things going on in your body. I felt the stress re-entering it. It was fascinating to go through. The freneticism of the city, yeah, there's a physicality to it. Even though it's at a subtle level and it's not visible, there's a physicality, that energy of people in close proximity moving around, and it influences you. Absolutely, it does. Oh, I think we're going to get on really well. Okay, that's great. I'm so excited to have met you. That's awesome. Yeah, me too, Neil. So as we wrap things up here, can you tell people listening where they can learn more about you? If they want to learn more about me, just go to aussieonlineentrepreneurs.com.au, and it's a u s i e o n l i n e. E-N-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S dot com dot A-U. <laughs> the time you realized that you should have chosen a shorter domain name. I was just thinking that too. Why did I choose A-O-E and have the, just the letters? <laughs> it doesn't matter because we'll put it in the show notes so people don't have to figure it out. That's excellent. I appreciate that. That's great. It's been a pleasure, Neil. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat. Likewise. And, and thank you so much. I really meant it when I said that a member mouse has absolutely revolutionized my life. I mean, without that single piece of software, it would not afford us not only the lifestyle that we have, but the ability to spend time with my children, the ability to spend more time with my wife. It would not afford me any of that. So I am deeply grateful that you took the time and the two years you took to get your beta out I am deeply grateful that you did that. Yeah, well, I'm deeply grateful that you're part of our family and that you being here means that I can continue to be here. So here we are. Thank you so much for listening to my entire conversation with Neil. I hope you're walking away with a more expansive perspective about what's possible for your life and business. And many thanks to Neil for coming on the show and sharing so freely from his experience. In my 12-year journey of starting and growing my own online business, I've learned a lot about myself and about what works and what doesn't. I offer coaching sessions for people at any stage of the entrepreneurial journey. The intention of these sessions is to help you find your voice, translate that into an actionable strategy, and help you discover and move through any obstacles that may be holding you back. If you're interested in having a conversation with me, head on over to membermouse.com slash coaching to book a session. For this podcast episode, if you'd like to get the links to all the resources we mentioned, you can head on over to subscriptionentrepreneur.com slash 187. There you'll also find the full show notes and a downloadable transcript of today's episode. If you've enjoyed this episode and would like to hear more engaging interviews with successful entrepreneurs, experts, and authors, be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or Stitcher. We have a growing library of engaging episodes with many more to come. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next time.